Good evening, y'all. We got an awesome unboxing and review for you this evening. Well, really not an unboxing, but more of a review. The manufacturer did send us this card. Of course, not the test bench. It's Intel 12th Gen with DDR5. But we are going to be doing some gaming, some benchmarks. We're going to be doing some reviews and some tips and tricks on how you might want to run this card. This card's also very cheap at the moment. So if you're looking for an upgrade past like a 1650 or even a little bit more than your 1060 or 1050, this is your card you're going to be looking at. Anyways, guys, we're going to get right into this Azrex uh, RX 580. And pretty much it has a TDP of 185. The core clock is going to be 1250. And the memory clock 1750 is a little bit low for an RX 580. I'm going to show you how you can tune that up a little bit. Um, I'm going to be doing my testing with it tuned up to what an RX 580 would be at. The power limit can go up to 50 or up 50% or positive 50 ticks or however you want to look at it, 50%. Um, it is 8 gigabytes of GDR5. Uh, there's three display ports on the rear of this with one HDMI and one DVI-D. I'm going to put a picture up here over here somewhere on the screen of the display ports and all the wonderful ports on the back of this. I have not tested all the ports. I, I don't know if this thing would be capable of five monitors, but I know it will at least should do four. Um, other than that, we're going to jump over to the on-screen and I'm just going to show you the specs and how I have this card clocked up and tuned up. So if we look here, I got MSI Afterburner. If you're wondering how to do that, just uh, pull up in a video on how to download MSI Afterburner. But I have the memory clock up to 2000. I have the core clock just set to whatever. I have the temp limit set to 90 and the power limit at 50. Of course, one thing I do want to mention is this was sent by the manufacturer. This was a free graphics card. So if you guys are wondering, um, anyways, we might do a drawing and give this card away, by the way. If you guys are interested, throw a comment down in the comment down sec. Throw a comment down in the comment section down below, and say you know put drawing next to your name, and you know we'll uh, pick somebody, randomly. Um, other than that, within the continental USA. Sorry, I don't. I won't do international shipping. I, I wish I had the extra cash to do it, but you know um, within the U.S. and Canada. Anyways, guys. So one thing I want to talk about is this power limit. Crank this up. You're going to want to turn the memory up. Hopefully your card can handle this memory clock up. If not, you're going to have to run it at the stock speeds. I will demo a, a benchmark here really quick. If you're wondering who would probably buy something like this, this would probably be on the lower end of PC builds. If you're looking to kind of dip your toes into building a PC and want to keep under that, well, probably a five, $600 build. Anything above that, you know, you probably could go with a little bit nicer of a GPU. A um, couple interesting facts about this GPU is this GPU will do 1080 and 2K. Um, you can get 4K videos and stuff to play on it, but it's really not a 4K card. Like, you're looking at something else if you want to do 4K. Anyways, let's just run a, a Fire Strike uh, benchmark really quick here. And while that's popping in the background, um, tell you some more about this test bench. This is an Intel 12th Gen with DDR5, 16 gigs of RAM. It's an egg at a... 240 millimeter AIO with a Gen PCI Gen 4 M.2 uh, 500 gig Western Digital Black. And uh, yeah, it's 1200 watt thermal take power supply. As you can see, guys, here, our test bench is running a test with 3D Mark Fire Strike. And <clears throat> this GPU seems to be performing pretty well. Looks like we're getting about 40, 50 frames per second, and this is a 2K box and a 4K monitor. And I have a custom curve set on MSI, so you could probably hear the fans. It's about how loud it would be in an open air case. Looks like our GPU is running about 57 Celsius, so it's not overheating. The memory uh, overclocked seems to be holding. Of course, I'd want to do some stress tests and stuff like that to actually test it. We're going to get into some gaming and benchmarks, and then we'll have a conclusion on if you should pick up one of these Azurex. RX 580s. All right, guys, so one thing uh, I love to do is run these benchmarks, and it really tells me how well a GPU can perform and if it's going to hold up against any other GPUs and how well it's going to do in gaming. So this kind of gives me like a baseline measurement, so that's why I do this. And I show you me doing this because it's I think it's very important, and especially the stress tests with graphics cards from names I know none of. 
I always do stress tests on new hardware that I've never, you know, dealt with before because you don't know how it's going to react. What if it, the stress test fails and then I go and review it and tell you guys, oh, this thing's awesome, and then people start running into games and the thing starts crapping out. So that's why you see the stress test. And of course, we did a crap ton of gaming. And this is Battlefield 2042, and this thing performed freaking awesome. We did Team Deathmatch and Conquest. I freaking loved it. And it actually played surprisingly well. And of course, Clisto Effect, which my AMD drivers updated and the FSR caused better performance on 1440p. What more could you ask for? Next turn, Cyberpunk 2077. It, it held up pretty well for being an old card on a brand new game, or newer, not brand new game, but newer game. Of course, we got Dirt 5, which is an awesome um, racer that I love to play. And it did, it performed pretty well, 40 and 50s. I don't think you could ask for better results. On the Forza 5, which performed decently, uh, you know, it's 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 a pretty game, and I mean, it's beautiful looking. Uh, and then we're gonna have GTA 5, which is up next, and this thing frickin' performed awesome. I couldn't ask for better results. Probably crank the settings up a little bit more on this if you really wanted to. And then PUBG real quick, which got awesome, awesome frickin' performance. And yeah, I mean, uh, next is Dead Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, and yeah, then on to Tomb Raider, and of course it performed pretty well, you know, as well as Tomb Raider can perform. Vermintite 2, Warhammer Vermintite 2 to be exact, it's a pretty old game, but still playable, uh, definitely playable. Of course, Rocket League, what, what would uh, benchmarks and gaming be without Rocket League? And yeah, it did freaking awesome, probably crank that on max if you really, really wanted to, and then we're on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, it did pretty good on 1080p, 1440p, you'd have to definitely manage your settings there. Um, and then off on to Modern Warfare 2, and yeah, it actually performed a little bit better, and I was per 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 really surprised. You probably turn it up just a little bit more than low if you really wanted to make the game look pretty, but if you wanted to play competitively, you'd probably keep it on low. So we left Fortnite for last, and anyways guys, we are going to get to the conclusion of this video and see how this graphics card panned out. Wow, I was just amazed. This RX 580 did a pretty good job. I was uh, really surprised with how well it handled the gaming and benchmarks. I'm going to have to give this thing two thumbs up, and uh, yeah, it's getting the Tech Nitwit seal of approval. Anyways, guys, if you're looking for one of these, you can find them on either Azurex's site or Amazon. I'll have links down and below and also in the video. Guys, this is Tech Nitwit. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, and yeah.